So we're gonna round this off with one last um, crash. Crash number. Crash number. Right, this four. one's very famous as well. This one happened in December 9th of 1965 in Kecksburg, Pennsylvania. Kecksburg. Kecksburg. There was a fiery object that was first observed in Windsor, Canada, and it flew through six states before it crashed. It was observed through six states, including... Plus Canada. Right, 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 right. Plus Canada. So, so coming from the north, going down okay. or southwest. Now, an southwest. interesting fact is that one witness claimed that the object turned 25 degrees from northwest to southeast over Cleveland, Ohio, without slowing down. So it made a turn without right. even slowing down. And some of the witnesses... Do they... Oh. Yeah. Do they know the speed it was going? Do they have any? I mean, approximately. Uh, it's probably super, super fast. I mean, there may be some documentation uh, on that. I didn't research okay, that particular okay. thing. But the object also made another turn northeast towards Kecksburg just before it crashed. So some of the witnesses reported that debris fell from this object and started fires in some of the farmers' fields along the way. Yeah. Um, and, and some of the people said they heard sonic booms as From well. speed. So it had to be more than... Right, it had to be thousand, going... Right. A thousand kilometers per hour at least. So there were two brothers, Ray and Rob... Um, Ray Jr. and Rob. Um, and they were riding their bikes in Kecksburg. And they just happened to look up and they saw a fireball in the sky. And it came over the top of the trees and disappeared over another group of trees in the distance. And around the same time, there were two other siblings, uh, uh, Nevin and Nadine Kalp, brother and sister, who were playing in their yard okay. of their house. And it, the object flew over them and crashed in the woods nearby. And that's about a m half a mile away from where they from were. Where they were. But they ran in the house and they told their mother. And they could see smoke coming up from the woods, from wherever this thing was. Right. After they told their mother, she had had the radio on. Mm -hmm. And she heard over the radio that there had been a, an airplane crash in the area. And if anybody had any news, to call this number. Oh, to get... So she called <clears throat> the number and reported what she saw. And what she said was a plane had crashed in the woods and burnt up. Mm -hmm. So not even a few minutes later, she got a call from a man who said he was from the U.S. Navy. And he asked her to watch the area and to call this number, which he gave her, mm -hmm. different number, if anything strange happened. Oh. So about 15 minutes later, two state police showed up with two men in plain clothes. Civil and when you say civil, civilian clothes? Civilian clothes. <coughs> and they asked her where the object was, where it had come oh, down. Yeah. You know, She pointed to the area, but now the smoke had stopped. So she didn't go there. She, she didn't see, she saw the smoke, but smoke. she didn't. She know the area, but she right. didn't go there. She so. did not go there. Right. The children did not go there either. Okay. So the two men in plain clothes, they had some box that she assumed was a Geiger, Geiger counter, counter yeah. or something. And they started walking down into yeah. the woods. And when they got there, they saw blue flashing uh, lights. Um, it, the sun went down. And there was a volunteer firefighter named uh, Jim, Jim Mays. And he was with several other firefighters and a team of state troopers. And they went, drove over to the top of a hill that overlooks the woods. Right. And they saw these flashing lights shining through the trees. And they said that the lights seemed to be timed. Like there seemed to be oh, some kind of... Synced? Like, or, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah and that they were as bright as a welding torch. Wow. So pretty bright. Yeah, because like, we can't even look lights. at it. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So 
They drove away so that they could get a closer view. They had to get off this hill and go down another road. Mm -hmm. But the state troopers blocked that road off so people couldn't get into that oh. area. There was a, a group of, another group of firefighters who were heading down into the woods thinking this was a plane crash, it might be a fire, right. you know, they're first responders, it might be able to help somebody who, who injured, injured from the crash yeah. or whatever. James Romansky was one of these firefighters and he went down with a small team and as they were going into the woods, another team radioed, we found it, it's down here and they described the area. So as they walked down the hill to this area, when uh, Romansky got there, he said he saw this object that had smashed into the ground. It was still in one piece, that it was a brown or bronze color and that it was the shape of an acorn and it had a bumper around the bottom that had some hieroglyphic like embossed uh, lettering on it. You know, it's like the Nazi cloak in... Uh, exactly, a lot the, of people... The, the cloak, yeah, the, the Yeah, the a bell. lot of people have said it's very similar to that. Yeah, um, the cloak, I think it's called. Right, right, yeah, the, the, the bell. bell. So he said it was about the size of a Volkswagen Beetle. Volkswagen, you see it's German. See, it is German. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Right? But he's, he said over the years, he's looked into this writing that he saw, and he's never seen anything like it. He's looked at Egyptian, Greek, Hebrew, Chinese, Russian, Polish. Nothing matches what he saw. Yeah. And we'll right? see there's a... That's not the only craft uh, that had writings on. No. And in England, no. they found a few. Actually, there's another one we'll talk probably right, later. Right, right. You know right, what Rushman right. talking about. I know exactly. So two mili military officers arrived. As soon as they arrived to the scene mm -hmm. and he saw this object, it was making a noise and it, and it stopped. And these two officers showed up and they told him, the military's now in charge, everybody out of the area. Of course. Right? Mm -hmm. So they were. But there's nothing to see, right? The military is here. <laughs> there's nothing. You, to <laughs> nothing ever happened. We were never here. Right? Yeah. As they were walking back up the hill to out of the woods, right. they saw military troops coming into the woods. More of them. More of them coming down into the woods, passing them on their way to wherever this crash site was. The military, as I said, was in the area, and they ended up commandeering the firehouse. They took it over oh. as their headquarters. Really? And that was their base of operations there. So the firemen were told, wait outside. Oh, nice. They we're must we're have taking this over this. right now. They must have loved this. Yeah, I'm sure they were pissed. Yeah. But they were told to wait there in case they were needed to put out a fire <laughs> or whatever, I, you know? In case the military so, screws up. Romansky said that while he was sitting outside there, mm -hmm. he saw a uh, jeep with a uh, flashing red light on it, driving really fast towards the, on the road that was right next to the right. firehouse. It was coming down the road really fast, and right behind it was a, a military flatbed truck with some object with a tarp over it, and they were both flying down the road. Wow. There were hundreds of people who heard about this crash that showed up. Oh, they really? heard it they over the radio, oh. and they just showed up. Well, you know, those small towns at the time, there was not much Nothing going on. Nothing going on. Yeah, this so. is better than a movie, right? Right, right exactly. <laughs> there was a, one of these onlookers was Bill Weaver, and he said when he got there, he was a young man, and when he got there, he said he could see bright lights down in the woods, but he couldn't see what it was, right? And and shortly after that, there was a box truck that pulled up, like from the roadway, pulled right. up, and the, these men in what he calls like moon suits, <laughs> you know, white, right? you know, uh, decontamination suits or whatever, uh -huh. got out of the vehicle and took a five foot square box. They carried it off this flatbed and walked it down into the woods. To put right, something so in. To yeah, put something knows? in, right? Right. Shortly after that, there was a military officer who came out of the woods and he told everyone who was civilian to back off. Get out of the area. Yeah. 
get the nothing going on here. Everybody out. go home. The Air Force has said, you know, that this object was a meteor. In December of 2005, NASA released a statement, and NASA scientists have examined metallic fragments from the area and determined that they were from a Russian satellite that re-entered the atmosphere and broke up. I've heard about that. And it's not the only case they said it might be a Russian... Uh... Right. So mysteriously, NASA also claims that the records <laughs> were lost in 1990s. How convenient. How convenient, right? So there's a number of articles, you know, and, articles and yeah. You know, here's a picture of the where the crash site supposedly took place and uh, this is supposedly the area there's an indentation oh, the here I don't yeah. know if that's where it was but they say it was in this area here mm -hmm. where it took place and here is a monument that they built to, a, a, yeah. it looks like an acorn right yeah, acorn that's what the Right, and you see the, uh, and they put a, a street sign here, right, and but compared to the, uh, the German, the uh, right, 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 book. right, and you see the writing here, right, um, okay. so, so okay. here is a reenactment of, <laughs> they're using the old trucks and bringing out this acorn, oh, that's so funny, right, right. So they do a reenactment, you know, everyone, I think they have a parade every year. Oh, really? I like yeah. Actually so know. these are the two investigators here who, who have done extensive, I mean, this guy, Stan Gordon, has spent like 30 or more years. On this case? He was a young guy at the time, okay. and he's been investigating this case to this day to find as many witnesses, to corroborate all this testimony, and Leslie Keene... Another investigator, she's the one who helped bring out the gimbal, the Tic Tac. Oh, really? She's, she's instrumental in, that, oh, we, we, in that New York Times article. She is oh, a very I'd famous love investigator. To talk to them. And as I said before, we're going to do an episode only, only on investigators. Yeah. yeah so yeah, that yeah. you know which cases they worked on and how instrumental the real they one were. And the bad one. Right, right, right. <laughs> So here are a couple examples of uh, satellites. Okay. Okay, yeah, so you can see, ah, it kind of looks like it. This one here really looks like it. Yeah. Right? That one, I mean, it's clear, you know, but it's the sh same shape. Right. And it's it could about be. Could well, be. a little smaller well, than the Volkswagen. And if it was Russian, of course the military wanted it. Yeah, and they don't have, want people to know. They, they don't, don't want, want the Russians to know, to that, know that we that have, they it. have it. They want to see what they're up to. Right, yeah. right. So I think that's all we have for today. Wow, thank you. Yeah, it was a um, good episode. We could go on and on I and on. Know, but I don't think I have enough. I don't think so. <laughs> so right, well, thank you again thank for you tuning again. in. Please subscribe. Join us next time when we have more cases. Yeah. Please subscribe. Don't forget Get to hit that bell on the bottom if you want to know about upcoming uh, episodes. Episode. And, and thanks again. Thanks again. Talk to you soon. See you next time.